Today, artificial intelligence excels at limited, precise tasks like as drafting an email on a certain subject or producing a picture from a caption. However, it falls short of the concept of artificial general intelligence, AGI, which would be a machine capable of comprehending the universe on par with any human. In the 1950s, academics such as AI pioneer Herbert A. Simon were sure that AGI would be available within a few decades. Since then, AGI has proven to be a difficult, if not impossible, milestone to reach. Roboticist Alan Winfield said in The Guardian that the gap between existing computers and AGI is as great as the gap between current spaceflight and faster than light travel. Others, though, believe that AGI is becoming a reality. Jordi Rose, for example, co-founded the quantum computer business D-Wave Systems in 1999. Sanctuary, Rose's new startup, stated today that it has secured $58.5 million in a fundraising round headed by Bell, Evoke Innovations, Export Development Canada, Magna, SE Health, Verizon Ventures, and Workday Ventures to develop the world's first human-like intelligence in general-purpose robots. Welcome to today's episode of AI News. In this episode, I will show you what this rather new company is working on and if they're really as far ahead as they say they are. Rose claims that a combination of breakthrough, technology in AI, cognition, computer vision, machine learning, theoretical physics, and quantum computing will help Sanctuary achieve its ambitious vision. Robots that mimic the different subsystems in a person's brain to break work down into manageable pieces. However, there are many critics, including former Salesforce chief AI scientist Richard Socher. Most startups thrive by focusing on a specialty and then expanding. It will be quite tough to build some generic AI with the correct software and hardware with that amount of resources. It's likely that Sanctuary will have to go more particular in their application, make their innovation solid, produce something substantial that can be sold into one market and genuinely address a problem, Socher, now the CEO of online search platform U.com, told VentureBeat via email. That answer is unlikely to be a GI and a general-purpose humanoid robot. Rose co-founded Kindred, a private AI firm located in Vancouver, Canada, with co-founder Suzanne Gildert prior to Sanctuary. Rose and Gildert set out on a quest to construct robots that can learn by seeing people execute jobs, with financing from Google, Bloomberg Beta, and others. Gildert developed the concept for Kindred while working as a physicist at D-Wave. She hypothesized that in circumstances when there isn't a lot of data to train a robot, people may contribute training data by leading the robot, allowing robots to achieve things they couldn't do on their own while also making them more capable. The approach, sometimes known as imitation learning, has been widely used in robots. Google researchers trained robots to walk by emulating a dog's motions, while OpenAI's now defunct robotics section learned robots to grip items by viewing examples. However, while imitation learning has promise, it is not without flaws. Imitation learning trained systems may not always transfer effectively to cases that were not included in the training data and generalization concerns might develop even after multiple demonstrations owing to dataset biases. Imitation learning also implies that humans can show the desired task, which isn't always achievable, especially in situations when a robot has a physical advantage. Nonetheless, Rose and Gildert believe that Kindred's approach to imitation learning might lead to human-level AI one day. Kindred employees donned virtual reality headsets in labs packed with robots to see what the robots were seeing and used handheld controls to assist the machines in picking up things. When people assisted the robots, algorithms exploited the information to make the machines smarter over time. The systems we have currently can move from the neck up, much like a person. It isn't ideal, but it comes close. The next stage is to actuate them from the belly button up. Most of the actions that people perform in their daily lives are really done sitting, Rose told The Globe and Mail in September 2018. This means that we can develop machines that can do occupations that humans do cheaply, better, and more efficiently than humans. Kindred's research and development efforts formerly included a headset and sensor-equipped outfit that may allow people, and even animals, to direct and train an army of robots. Experts voiced doubts that the business could provide the system as envisaged, and Kindred finally dialed back its expectations, probably reflecting technological reality. 
Kindred was bought for $262 million in November 2020 by British retailer Akado, who had already invested extensively in robotic fulfillment systems, after switching to robotic systems that can select, arrange, and sort items for e-commerce fulfillment. Kindred broke out its R&D branch in 2018 under the moniker Sanctuary. Rose stepped aside as CEO and president of Kindred to head it, with the agreement that Sanctuary would license some of Kindred's patents and software and retain a minority stake. Sanctuary's study, according to Rose, is a continuation of Kindred's early research, understanding the human mind well enough to construct one in a machine. He sees human-piloted or human-supervised robots capable of doing nearly any activity, from clearing a landmine to sterilizing a hospital to exploring outer space, robots capable of thinking, reasoning, and interacting with the environment in the same way that humans do. What if you weren't confined to accessing only one human-like mind? Rose wonders in a blog post published this morning. Machines that can function like this will play an important role in tackling a wide range of complicated issues. But it's not simply forcing usage cases. In the near future, these machines may potentially be deployed to undertake duties that are too risky for humans. Rose's lofty goal is to create machines with the same ideals, and even the same rights, as humans. During a seminar at McMaster University in 2018, he stated that he hopes to one day construct a sanctuary city in Vancouver where future robots might live and work alongside humans. Robots will be able to interpret the world in the same manner that people do, have the same emotional range, and have the same sense of self, he stated at McMaster's 33rd annual J.W. Hodgins Engineering Memorial Lecture in Hamilton, Ontario. We can't accomplish it now, but it serves as a north star for the job I do. Sanctuary has received interest from customers, representing a dozen different industry verticals, according to Rose, and Sanctuary's advisory board includes former astronaut and International Space Station commander Chris Hadfield and Anusha Ansari, the first self-funded woman to fly to the International Space Station. Sanctuary appears to have business momentum as well, with Abbey Research estimating that the market for mobile robots, such as the autonomous guided trailers used in warehouses, will expand 47% per year to 2.4 million units in 2025. Aside from practical concerns, Socher's thesis is that AGI may be overkill for parts of what Sanctuary seeks to do. Eolus, a gigantic, humanoid cleaning robot capable of inflicting great harm on anybody in its path, spends a whole minute to pick up a toy animal and place it in a nearby trash. Covariant, a Berkeley, California-based startup backed by Jan LeCun and others, claims to have built a special purpose system capable of choosing and packaging 10,000 distinct types of products with 99% accuracy. Beyond fulfillment, there are robots that can take on several of the difficulties listed in Sanctuary's news statement. For more than a decade, Robots have been employed to demean landmines, and during the epidemic, machines were widely utilized to sterilize not just hospitals but also offices and public spaces. Robots for space research are also not new. The first rover in space, the Soviet Union's Lunokhod 1, successfully landed on the moon in 1970. In the early 2000s, NASA sent numerous humanoid robots into space. To be sure, today's robots are far from ideal. Grasping items is still a challenging task. Household robot prototypes, such as PR2, built by academics at the University of Bremen, are incapable of stably holding things such as spoons and milk cartons. Tightening or loosening bolts, ripping up a paper towel, pouring water, opening a container with a locking safety cap, and other simple actions that people perform require precise motions that many robots struggle with. According to Mike Cook, a member of the Knives and Paintbrushes AI research group, current approaches, particularly RL, will likely be adequate to overcome many of these challenges. So, what is your opinion Sanctuary? Do you believe their claims that they're building a human-level intelligence robot and do you think they're going to accomplish that previously thought impossible feat? Please tell us your opinion in the comment section below. I would love to hear what you have to say about it. Thank you for watching AI News. We consistently report on the newest technologies that are shaping the future of our world. We'd appreciate you subscribing and watching our other videos. See you around and take care.